How's it going everyone? Zulu Panda here with Chinu at Play Music Incorporated on Kingsway in Vancouver. Today we're going to be talking about some awesome things including my Millennium Falcon shaped guitar and the best way to set up a pedal board. This is the Millennium Falcon Shapes Guitar. Chino, what are your first impressions? It is not what I was expecting. It is so cool. I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah, it looks great. It's got some quality parts on it. It looks like it was a lot of heart and soul put into this thing. We have an alder core here. We have the original 1977 Kenner Classic Millennium Falcon toy. Purchased at Cherry Bomb Toys in Victoria. We have some Graftech bridge and nut parts here. It's a Dean Hollywood neck. This is a mid-80s flying V that uh, was rescued from Red Deer and then uh, Frankenstein into this beauty. These are DiMarzio pickups. It is originally conceived by Stuart McClellan and Victoria. And then recently I've had it set up again by... I am Nicola Lasnack, moved here in Vancouver. We're in my shop uh, in East Van, just off Commercial Drive. Uh, this is uh, your Millennium Falcon Dean Hollywood guitar that you brought in, which is super cool. Uh, it's been getting lots of uh, looks in the shop. Everybody's kind of digging it. Lots of it was like stability and playability, uh, as well as improving um, some tone. So um, did a refret on it. Um, first of all, planing the board to make sure it's straight again. Um, and a nice even kind of playing surface, but I, I also found that the fingerboard was delaminating from the neck So I glued that back together, which is going to help with stability as well um, And then put in a new graph tech nut uh, Which will make it stay in tune a little better and new graph tech saddles actually the string saver saddles So it's kind of like we, we graph tech to uh, your axe. <laughs> That's what they always say um, as well as uh, working on the electronics, kind of upgrading the components in there so it's a little better quality and should have a fuller, punchier sound. Two new pots in there and a uh, new paper and oil capacitor as well as a stereo output jack which just gives you better connection. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, on Instagram, you can check out my website. Um, it's under Nicola Lawson Agruthieri. I know a little bit about guitar pedals, but I have to admit that I still am a bit of an amateur when it comes to it. So these are some of my pedals that I've acquired recently, and we're going to talk about the best order for pedals and what each pedal does. Very important to have. I think everybody, if you're starting up, you know, the first pedal that you should probably get is a tuner pedal. This will help you stay in tune, and also whenever you're switching between guitars, it's definitely going to help you. It'll mute your sound. Clean switches. Yeah, know. that clean bypass. So this Definitely. is a, a yeah. basic uh, and an older Boss uh, chromatic tuner pedal. Um, it It's still in good shape. Um, in terms of distortion stuff, I've got two big things here. So this is my newer purchase. This is a Klon clone. And then this is a Jekyll and Hyde uh, Overdrive's distortion pedal. It has a nice real fat sound to it. This is uh, a Moon Looper pedal. It does the trick. I've had some time to experiment with it. Snake Charmer compressor pedal. Before I had a tube amplifier, this was really good for providing that tube sound. And then this is an older uh, digital delay pedal from Boss as well. Oh, and I think the last thing to mention, of course, is the uh, classic Wah pedal. This is what I've got to work with. In terms of the way in which pedals are ordered, what is the best classic order? You know, if you're throwing uh, delay, distortion, right. flange, all that yeah. wonderful goodness. What's yeah. the best way to set so, it all up? What I would do is, uh, so your first signal from your guitar, the best way to do it is go straight into the tuner because this is the start of your signal here from the guitar. This will kill everything that's that's, be, that's behind that. So uh, let's just pretend this is your pedal board here, this little section. Sure. So usually the guitar will go in through the pedal and from here sometimes I'll throw in maybe an overdrive pedal right an overdrive pedal. Um, what that does is it'll power everything else as well that's behind that. So overdrive pedal, you, it's 
it's okay to mix and match too. You maybe you know, if you want to throw in a delay before that, you can. It's gonna have a very different each, depending on which where it goes where each pedal goes, it's gonna have a different sound. Yeah, it's not right. like math in the sense that it, you know, uh, one plus one uh, right. equals two. Right. Each pedal has its own signal and a different flavor. Right. It's like putting on filters on a photo. Exactly, it's gonna go yeah. through a different circuit. So depending on where you do it, I would say if you have time, experiment with it. Try, yeah. try it here, try it over there, right? It doesn't really matter. Always keep your tuner in the front. That's probably the best way to go. But in terms of sound, people yep. normally put uh, an overdrive or yep. distortion first and exactly. then they switch yeah. to something. Yeah. So usually after, after an overdrive, um, they will either put a chorus in there, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. you, you'll have two signals. Um, or a reverb pedal? Or a reverb pedal as well, yeah. yeah. Usually the delay comes last. Last. Yeah, because it is a time-based um, pedal. What that means is that usually if, if your guitar amp has what we call an effects loop, usually the delays and the choruses will usually go through so anytime the sound is looped or uh, yeah. um, the time of the sound is affected, that yeah. should be towards the end, so it exactly. flows through. You got it, yeah. Great. So uh, these guys are more straight through, so it's probably best for that. Sometimes you can even link up two distortion pedals or two overdrive pedals so if you want. So this actually brings up a good point about distortion pedals. Yeah. So let's say I like the sound of one distortion pedal uh, over another, but I want to have both on my board. Um, an issue at hand is obviously turning one off and turning another on uh, without uh, changing the signal. And sometimes, you know, there's a signal path that you have to suffer through. If you have something like this, uh, it's also called an Abbey box sometimes, uh, but a dual looper, uh, what these things do is they can change the path of the signal. So uh, if you have enough of these funky chords kicking around, you can change the signal path. So what that means here is uh, if we have it coming from the tuner into the blue box, we can have it running through A channel, which will run it into uh, the red guy here, or B channel, which will run it through to the gold guy here. Um, basically, this just makes your life easier. Uh, it doesn't do anything sound-wise in and of itself. Uh, this can also work as a true bypass as well, so if you don't have anything and you just don't want the distortion anymore, rather than clicking the distortion button and mucking with your knobs, you can just hit the Abbey box and uh, change the signal. So we're talking about compression pedals again. Yeah. We're putting it right after the distortion pedal, Going, right? Yeah. Sometimes um, I could have a boost here as well if you wanted to boost for for solos and stuff. You know, an interesting thing about uh, pedals now is they are getting so small. Like this yeah. fits into the palm of my hand, whereas this classic compressor, while it does have uh, actual tubes in it, this is gigantic. It, yeah. it just hogs everything up on your board. Yeah. I've seen crybabies now half the size as well for the same reason. So in terms of the looper, uh, you know, looping with guitarists is really popular nowadays. Right. You probably want this at the end of the signal chain, yes. right? So you yeah. can get that full yeah. distorted effect yeah. uh, going through and yeah. use that to the best of your ability. Yeah, exactly. I'd probably put this guy at the very end here. Yeah. Um, so let's just say, let me get a couple of other pedals just so that we can... Sure, yeah, that sounds great. Here. So this is kind of the order that I usually do it. I'll go chorus, re uh, reverb, and then the delay at the very end. Yeah. If you put the delay in the front, you're going to hear that it's very hard to control the volume of the delay, right? Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just nothing there. It's just loud until it shuts off. With this guy, it's going to be a little more subtle. You can really dial in the, the, the delay that you need there. A wall could probably go right here as well, right? If you want to use the wall, I'd probably stick it in right there. Before the distortion. Yeah. Before, or even maybe. Maybe even before, before the yeah, tuner. Or that as well. Right? I've seen often uh, wah pedals off to the side of the too. They are, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they'll be way off to the side, maybe in the middle of the stage where, they, mm. where the lead guitarist wants to come and do its thing. Right? They'll have that there as well. The interesting thing about pedals is that every one has its own unique character to it. So you can get a variety of different sounds. In the classic era, it was a lot of fun for people to work with signal chains. Nowadays with computers, things are changing, but you just don't get the same level of uh, control and, and tactile feel to the sound. And that's kind of silly having a tactile feel to the sound, but it's, it's true in a lot of ways that you can feel the difference. Whereas if you went through a computer generated system, uh, it would be a, a different sort of uh, uh, process and probably not exactly what you want necessarily all the time. Recording, it, it's interesting, oftentimes you don't use these setups until the very end, but uh, you know, it, it's a lot of fun for live shows in particular. That's what the, the pedal board was made yeah. for. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So the other thing to consider, of course, is that each one of these is going to need their own set of power. And while there are uh, boxes that provide power to 
uh, multiple pedals. Uh, it is good to make sure that every pedal is getting the power they need. So we'll be talking about that once we get the board set up here, about uh, you know what the ideal setup is uh, electricity wise. Okay, we're back and it looks like we've set up a decent board here. We're just hooking this up with these daisy chains, but you gotta make sure that you have the big nine volt adapters because if you don't and you just have one of these little guys, you will not have enough power to uh, give you a proper sound signal. The other reason I love Play Music Incorporated on Kingsway, of course, is because they support local music. Check out this awesome display they have of mine. You can come on down, check out their great goods. So many cool things in this store. watching. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I like Play Music Incorporated. It's a great store. I think you should all come here. You know, I really am grateful for them for letting me film here. Thank you.